In this video, we're going to talk about how to configure an InTouch OMI map app. The map app is a new application that comes with the new 2017 release of InTouch OMI, which gives us the ability to layer assets, graphics, orchestra graphics on a map, and the map will be zoomable, and we can zoom in, and we can see different levels of detail on that map. So let's go take a look at how we can do this inside the InTouch OMI interface. So you can see I have an OMI application running that has the map app configured. Behind the scenes, this is an Esri map overlay. So if I zoom in to a specific area, I'm going to zoom in to, say, West Virginia here. And as I start zooming in, you can see some assets starting to appear on the map. So simulating some remote pump stations here. And I can see live data. This is basically an orchestra graphic that's embedded inside the map application to be able to see live status, whether it's things running, actual analog values showing up on the map application. So if I start drilling into a specific area, if I start drilling into station one, you can see a little more detail appears. So I can see the now the flow, the temperature, the pressure. I have a polar star here, which is our situational awareness type graphic embedded on the screen. So any orchestra graphic that you create can be embedded inside the map application, and then we can trigger the, those symbols to appear based on the zoom level. So if I zoom out, of course, that detail is going to disappear and I'm going to see just an overview of the different assets I have out there. So if I want to drill into station number two, same type of thing, I drill into station number two and I see a little more detail associated with station number two. So let's go take a look at the configuration and see how this is put together. We're going to actually add another station to the map. So if I open up my integrated development environment, I'm going to open up my SCADA view app, which is basically an OMI application, Wonderware's new HMI application. So if I double click on my SCADA view map, I'm going to open this guy up. I'm going to see the configuration. I already have a layout configured, but basically you configure a layout and a screen profile. The screen profile right now I have set up for a SCADA map, which is basically a full screen. And then I have a layout, you know, another full screen layout. I can choose different layouts that I want. So I'm just going to go full screen for the purpose of this video. So then you select the toolbox, drill down to default content, go down to apps, and then you're going to see InTouch OMI apps, and you're going to see the map app here. So basically what I did, I took the map app and I drug it and placed it on top of that SCADA layout application. And that's all I really need to do to configure the map app to be part of that layout. So I have some corresponding objects here, station one, two, three, four, that are actually uh, simulating some data. If I open up station number four, I don't have that on the map application as of yet, but you can go see that there are some symbols already defined. These are where those symbols are defined, those map overview symbols. So if I look at that symbol, that's what the overview symbol is going to look like when I put that onto the actual map application. I have the symbol here that at the higher zoom level, that station flow, you're going to see what that looks like. So these symbols are already embedded in my objects, which is the beauty of the system platform object oriented technology. I created a template that had all these four stations on it. And then I embed these graphics one time, and then all the children will wind up with those graphics. So let's go look at the actual map app itself and see how that's configured. So if I go to my graphic toolbox here, and I drill down into default content, apps, InTouch OMI application, I have the map application. If I drill into the map application, this is where you tell it the different provider, who's going to be the provider of the base layouts. You know, here's the options. I can have OpenStreetMaps or ArcGIS is what I'm using, which is Esri, Bing. Um, Google Maps can be as, used as a background. So that's showing me the layer. And then here's the URL. In this case, the sample ArcGIS map that I'm going to link to. This is an online version of uh, Esri that, that has that map overlay that I was using in the graphic. So next we need to configure the zoom layers. The zoom layers tell us when a specific orchestra graphic is going to appear. And there's a parameter in there you can set the zoom level that this graphic is going to appear at this zoom level. We can create your own zoom levels and create the, the different table that you want here. Some of these are default, but I added the station detail. When I zoom into that specific pump station, I'm going to see that detailed information about that pump station. 
So next we're going to configure the actual assets on the map itself. So what we have here, we have the ability to add an asset to a map. Basically, we have the asset name. This is basically the object name in our case. The graphic that's associated with that graphic. What is the layer? What is the zoom layer that's going to enable this graphic? So I'm in at the city level, I'm going to enable this graphic. The station detail layer for my overview graphic is going to appear. And then, of course, the latitude and longitude of the actual asset where it's going to appear on the map. So we're now we're going to add a new station to the map. Station 4 was not on the map previously. We're going to add station number 4. So I'm going to go click on my assets, and I'm going to click on my simulation area, and I'm going to go down to the process area. So this models my plant model that I have in my IDE, and there's station number 4. And there's the graphics that are associated with station number 4. So I'm going to take this overview graphic, and I'm going to drag it over here, and now I'm going to have the overview graphic here. I'm going to take my station flow graphic and also put that over here. So now I need to set up the layer and latitude and longitude. So my layer here is going to be, so if I go to the properties, and it's going to be station detail, and my station flow is going to be the city layer. So if I highlight station number four, and I click on the properties over here, this is where I can add the location. So I'm going to paste in the latitude. Pick the second guy here. I'm going to paste in that latitude. I'm going to go fill in my longitude. Paste that in here and do the same for the second graphic. So this information, I can type it in here through the properties pane or also have the ability to import, export this data. So I could do this in an Excel spreadsheet and import it all at once. So I wouldn't have to do this actually in the user interface. So once my configuration for station four is complete, I'm going to save that. I'm going to close it down, check this in just like any other object out here. So the map app gets checked in. It's going to make me redeploy the actual view application, the OMI application. So I'm going to deploy that out to my uh, OMI application. So once that is deployed, I open up my OMI application. Now I'm going to zoom into that West Virginia area. And you can see station number four which did not exist before is now showing up on the map. So we configured that. We added the latitude and longitude on that so it's showing up at the correct location. As I drill in, you can see a little more detail. There's information coming from that station number four, you know, from the orchestra graphics that were embedded in that specific asset. So I think the OMI map application is a great tool for anybody that has remote assets, water, wastewater, uh, oil and gas, anybody that has any remote assets, they want to see where they are on GIS maps and things like that. It's a great tool to be able to see those assets, see live data, see alarm information about that data in your OMI application. So thank you for watching today. If you have any questions about what you have seen in this video, please contact me at the email address on the screen. Thanks again.